Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. We had the Computex 2010 uh, with Marilou Jepsen. And uh, right now, you have reached a, a place uh, where we, the, the screen's actually be, gonna be in product. Right. <laughs> It's so, very exciting. We're in a half a dozen different uh, product launches starting, I think, tomorrow morning, Tuesday, the start of our Computex. So right here you're showing it uh, on Windows XP, uh, Ubuntu, with yeah. the Pixel Chi, and over there, uh, Windows 7. Yeah, Windows 7. This has got integrated touch, so you can move there. things around. We've got multi-touch on this, this faster touch. So there's a 10-inch capacitive touchscreen on this one. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so, that's right. So Apple what? didn't buy all the 10-inch touch. No. So this is a you know a nice install of of uh, Ubuntu. Where are Netbook you? Netbook edition. Yeah, the Netbook edition. It's Ubuntu yeah. 10.04. I just installed it uh, yesterday. Cool. Are there any drivers or something like that that you need to have on the uh, to to make your screen work? No, we can just actually plug these screens directly into different systems. It's a 40-pin LBDS interface, and it's pretty standard. The EDID is actually yeah. a Pixel Chi PQI, but you know, it just works fine. All right, and then you have this shortcut where you do the FN F2. That, oh that yeah, and these these laptops, the manufacturer. Uh, well, we're out in the bright sun, so you can't see yeah. the backlight. But the this the whole point of this screen is you can turn the backlight off or on. It's reflective when you yeah. turn the backlight off and looks like an, an e-paper and then you turn yeah. the backlight on yeah right so you can move and open up something cool. else maybe so uh, all the blog the whole blogosphere has been waiting for pixel chi to have them in products and and uh, so c could you say just a little bit of uh, there was some kind of delay that happened right and there what was, was that about a little bit of delay and i guess you know what we're doing is new we use the the huge factories of the world to make our products and it's a bit like we design a car and we try to send the design to the car factory to make the car that's what we're doing in, in, in a sense and what we've done in starting one laptop per child what i did before before starting pixel 2 but the economic crisis hit and so our first factory went through some consolidation with other factories and that slowed things down. There were no technical problems. There was a factory access problem. It's as if you bit picked Ford for your first factory, and then you said, okay, fine, I'll try Toyota, that'll be safe. Well, then they went through some problems too. So I can't say the factory names that we're using, but that was the issue. So we're bringing them online fast. It's been difficult for the factories through the economic crisis. Nice. So, uh, so there is something about the font, uh, the font, the quality of the font. Uh, that's quite important to have good readability. And uh, yeah. so, Ubuntu, for example, has a special way of doing the fonts. Yeah, the subpixel rendering uh, that the Ubuntu people did is really quite nice. Stunning fonts. These are very, very small, probably millimeter high, and it just looks stunning. It doesn't look very good on a standard screen it looks great on ours because they really here's the thing is that the human visual system sees with three or four x resolution in black and white compared to color luminance if you will instead of prominence that's the way information is encoded ever since the first tv systems ntsc pal ccam and mpeg jpeg all of them do that yet we make screens ordinarily the opposite way we use a red, green, and blue pixel to together make a black and white pixel, which is the opposite of how we see and the opposite of how information is encoded. But the software install base is pretty strong. So there was, was a lot of work here, I think, on hinting and looking at the borders of, of this is Digit Times here, uh, the borders of where the pixels end up and so forth. So it looks just very crisp, very stunning text. Um, nice. Which is very important for for reading. Is Android has good set, has good text as well? Android does have pretty good text. Yeah. I was just I really thought this was a nice install on good. on Ubuntu. I just so the the ten inch capacitive demonstration is a uh, uh, the, the visibility of the when you have a capacitive compared to uh, non non touch. Yeah. Well, this is the wide view stuff that we've got. We've got wide view working now. We haven't put the wide view with the capacitive touch. Actually, I just saw the first one. It's in our offices right now. Yeah. There's a little rainbow artifact that we've, we've fixed on, on, on the capacitive touch. This is a, a much wider viewing angle 
that is very good for for tablets. I know I'm showing it in an yeah. app book, but we'll be showing it in a tablet tomorrow um, in a variety of different places. So this viewing angle over there. That's the steep viewing angle. Nice. And then you know anywhere you want to look. So, but the, the still the capacity does add some kind of. Uh, uh, layer it up somehow. So That's it does... true. Yeah, so we glue this down. Just glue it down, down it, and uh, it does add a layer on top. So nice. But it, it, it so works. Could you say just a word about the OLPC because uh, they have just announced that they're working with Marvel to do the XO3. Yes. Um, and they hope to have Pixel G. What What would you say needs to happen for it to be there? Uh, in the, in the, industry. the seventy-five dollar tablet that, yeah. that Nicholas and uh, and Marvell have shown is fabulous. We support them. We work very closely with OLPC on all of their screens. They have to decide the exact screen size. We believe the price point is absolutely hittable. It's a function of volume. The way our industry works. Again, the car analogy is good. You design a car. If you make ten of them, they cost a lot. If you make millions of them, they don't cost so much. So it's all the function of moving the volume through the fabs and getting access to the fabs to, to, to do that. And that okay. that's the big trick. That's what people haven't done before in display. And as a result, a lot of display innovation tends to be lovingly handcrafted prototypes from the, the lab yeah. that then go into sort of these small little pilot facilities for production, which takes years and by the time Okay. That gets done, it, it's it's uh, probably missed the window of opportunity. Okay. The cost of LCD glass is so cheap, we believe the best way to innovate is to use that manufacturing structure okay. and to create really new designs using that manufacturing structure. The same way you can create innovative chips using a CMOS silicon fab, or the same okay. way you can create innovative code using C. Yeah. It's not about the compiler or about the silicon process. Yeah. It's about what you can do with the logic and the use yeah. of the... One thing that needs to happen for the tablets to reach a developing world is that they should be unbreakable, right? And, and, and Nicolas yeah. Negopando was talking about the plastic That's version. Right. Yeah. What needs to happen for that to work? There's a big movement here to move away from glass to, to plastic here in, in Asia. There's four countries in the world that really manufacture LCDs. Taiwan, China, Korea, and, and Japan in high volume. And there's been a movement to plastic base. Right now what's used is very, very thin glass. And the whole systems are set up to handle these robots and so forth, to handle huge sheets of glass around the fab. And so when you move to plastic, you can do it. You have to be careful about scratching the plastic and handling the plastic and so forth, keeping it clean and, and, and the ilk. But then also plastic melts at a, at a lower temperature than glass. And so you have to be careful on, on depositing metal layers and oxide layers and an amorphous yeah. silicon or low temp poly, poly layers. But a lot of that work has, has been done and it's just a matter of time to switch over into the fabs. And so, nice. you know, the question is, is it next year? Is it the year after? It's coming um, and it, there's, there's flexible plastic, yeah. but just unbreakable is easier. It's sure, easier. we want to roll it up, but just, just unbreakable is easier and that's coming along. Unscratchable you also? Not scratchable. There's some hard coatings you can put put on, yeah. on the plastic to make that. And then there's also the opposite way. What about peeling the plastic? So how do you solve a problem with scratchable? Do you there's something some noisy going on here? Yeah. Um, you know, if you can heal it, or can you make it unscratchable, or is it a combination of those? All right. I know Nicholas scratched How, his how about iPad. the visibility uh, of a plastic screen compared to glass? Is there anything you know about? The, is it is going to be just as good or? You know, it's, it's pretty good. Glasses, eyeglasses yeah. switched to plastic a number of years ago. A lot of people swore the glass was, was better, but the, the, the actual transmission efficiency is okay. Now, plastic tends to yellow a little bit, but you can counter that because you know how it yellows, right? And you know what you can... It doesn't yeah. yellow a lot if it's thin, but if it, it can get, you know, a little bit sand, yeah. make it a little tiny bit bluer and you're, you're fine. Cool. All right, so thanks a lot, and uh, let's right. check all the devices that are actually being shown here at Computex. Oh yeah, great, I'll show you those tomorrow. Okay, thanks.